46th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council is taking place currently in Geneva, Switzerland. You might have heard that there is a resolution sponsored by United Kingdom, Germany, Canada and few other countries against Sri Lanka. Now this has raised serious concerns in Sri Lanka. So tonight we thought we would go a little deep into this and discuss this subject. To do this, none other than an expert in the subject we've called today, and that is Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister, Honorable Dinesh Gunawadana. Honorable Minister, thank you very much for taking time off and joining our program. Sure. Um, let me start by asking you, um, what are the Sri Lanka's foreign policy priorities at the current state? Sri Lanka's foreign policy and His Excellency Gotabe Rajapaksa has been very clearly stated before the country, endorsed by the country by a massive mandate. We have continued to maintain a neutral, non-aligned foreign policy, respected by all right across the world. Sri Lanka has been a pioneer in the movements of the non-aligned movement and President's neutral non-aligned foreign policy adds a new chapter to our future that we have been faced. It, it covers not only political but economic and new relations that we should develop on the basis of friendship with all. Honorable Minister, now it's 12 years since we have finished this brutal war, uh, which lasted for 30 years. But there hadn't been a shortage of resolutions against us by the UN Human Rights Council. Why do you think this is? Of course, Sri Lanka had to face up to the challenge of one of the deadliest terrorist organizations in the world, which all these countries finally accepted that it's one of the deadliest organizations that therefore it should be proscribed. And also after 9-11, the shock that hit the United States when New York was attacked by terrorists, there was a UN resolution that was moved to defeat terrorism at any cost. Sri Lanka was the first country that defeated uh, the LTT terrorists after the UN resolution. Uh, but they have had enough connections right across, been feeding them in order to achieve their ends of a separate state. This is what keeps going, resolution after resolution against Sri Lanka. The present resolution by the core group has more substance after a democratic mandate by the people of Sri Lanka giving the president's election as well as the election of the government under His Excellency the President last August. How our internal affairs have to be run including the constitution, administration, day-to-day -day functions uh, which has never been a human rights council issue. They are less on the commission of inquiry that we have appointed. President pledged the commission of inquiry headed by a Supreme Court judge which has been appointed for any of the complaints that they, the so-called allegations they have to make could come to, in addition to the reports that are, that are available, which could be re-examined. Now, the Human Rights Commission does not accept, or they say, the core group says, or they are attempting to say, Sri Lanka's Supreme Court and the Constitution is not what we want. You all listen to the commissions that, or commissioners that we appoint, and that is the only way out. 
That's why they are trying by way of another bid to bring this core group resolution which has been uh, rejected by Sri Lanka because it is based on wrong facts, figures, numbers and arguments. Also, it is a country specific resolution which is not the principle on which Human Rights Commission was adapted. Sri Lanka is a member of all UN agencies with which we have been performing without any difficulty. Also, the resolution that they are trying to move has been rejected, criticized or condemned by over 21 countries standing up for Sri Lanka. This is an important message that carries through the Human Rights Commission sessions now in virtual. None of them, none of us can get there except the commissioners and, uh, and the commissioners officials. This is how they are trying to run an international body. The UN Charter does not allow to bypass our constitution. We are a sovereign state as members of the United Nations. And what the Commission tried and what the core group is trying to do is to infringe on our sovereignty as a sovereign independent state in the United Nations. Right. So, to be clear again, the OHCHR report plus the resolution is demanding of us uh, 13th Amendment implementation and uh, uh, changes in the judicial system, not to appoint it, to guide uh, uh, military officers to different places, like very specific things in the country. So, does the UNHCR has power to put a resolution like this or they don't have power? These UN demands they have made. A good question. They have no power, but they are trying to assume power right. yes, against the principle of their creation. Own creation, yeah. I mean, when Nigeria was not created for this type of individual selective actions of countries, constitution, parliament, the EU itself uh, gave a report that Sri Lanka had a very clean, clean, clear election process and elected a parliament. Now the parliament is acting. Didn't these same people realize that Sri Lanka's constitution is the supreme uh, body that creates our parliament and the president? That they're going into issues, as you mentioned, appointment of a secretary, holding of the election. Mm -hmm. Election was scuttled because of the last government foolish measures of bringing an amendment. Supreme Court held until these amendments stands, you can't have elections for provincial council. Mm. I mean, doesn't the commission, commissioner or the core group know this truth? But they're trying to cover up and mislead the council. I must categorically say we reject such issues which are internal affairs of a country which is not normally taken up in the Human Rights Council. Right. Now, uh, when you come to voting the countries like India, we have seen, we have seen a shift, a constant flip-flop of the from time to time on, on, on India's position. Is this due to largely their internal political issues? This is my one question. The other question, Honorable Minister, I just want to couple it to this about Euro-Asian countries. Uh, what are their position and what would you expect on their vote this time? Yeah, there are 193 countries of the UN and only 47 are members of the council. In rotation, they are elected regionally, only 47. And the EU, EU has a dominating role for which they have created themselves because all economic domination uh, that is influencing countries also has a factor to play in these sessions uh, because that's how uh, the core group 
wants to tackle the situation rather than facing the facts. Figures, we challenge. Let us sit down and face the figures. They are not ready to. Their own member of the British Parliament and House of Lords today, Lord Nesby has come out with confidential documents of the British government. Are they going to deny that? They run away from that, sorry to say. I have to make that clear. We have asked them, let's sit down and see the figures. They are not ready to. I mean, take one by one the issues. This is how they are trying to push a resolution against Sri Lanka. That's to show that they have a certain number of perhaps uh, rallying ground um, uh, support against the views of our sovereign and nations. That in 21 countries and over who are supporting and stood up and spoke for Sri Lanka's clear position of rejecting the commissioner's report on false figures, arguments, and facts, and also the right of a country to reject this type of resolution, which is country-specific resolution, which is not the principle of the Human Rights Commission. Sri Lanka brought about the greatest defense of human rights by defeating the LTT that is a new era for our country for the Sinhala, Tamil and Muslim all our countrymen today enjoy as a result of this defeat from Point Pedun to Dandra and back anyone can travel or do business at all, any vocation in Sri Lanka. Any foreigner could also do the same and perhaps also tell the Human Rights Commissioner the ground situation in Sri Lanka is not what she's seeing from Geneva. Yeah. In the face of this kind of challenge, here back at home, what do we need to do to make us more stronger? What do we need to do in Sri Lanka to be more strong in a situation like this? Sri Lanka, of course, certain issues, if they are racing, we have to follow up. If certain matters are, have got delayed, but the key issues of getting some of the institutions in, that are functioning, we have supported by way of the budget and the president and the government is committed to supporting the office of the missing people and so many other areas where people of the northeast and the rest of the country can have their livelihood, their progress and their rights further protected by way of this democratic governance that our country is in. Honorable Minister, I'd like to ask, if you don't mind me asking maybe a one-line answer or a one-word answer for this question. If in the unlikely event, if this resolution goes through and voted against us, is it binding on us or is it not? And none of these resolutions can work without the binding of the respective country. But Sri Lanka has achieved most of, most of what the Human Rights Commissions have been on and off counseling, they can come and visit Sri Lanka and see whether those matters that they have been raising is in implementation. If I may correct one issue, we expect Sri India as our closest neighbor to stand with Sri Lanka in this issue in Geneva. Honorable Minister Dinesh Gunawardena, thank you very much for joining us today on uh, this chat and thank you for sharing your thoughts. We wish you all the success and in all the tasks you are doing and you and your staff are doing across the world uh, for Sri Lanka and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much for joining us.